we have not given chance sir for all welcome this practice in the night just uh, in the council we apply for bail okay our client on similar terms as his co-accused who are released for a 50,000 Kenyan shillings cash bail or a hundred thousand shillings bond. I, I was just looking at how the DCI is describing our client <coughs> on their social media on the 24th of this month under the heading X Mungiki leader. When they were circulating by his one. So although there are so many charges claiming that he is uh, in an unlawful organization, the DCI seems to acknowledge that he is a former leader of that organization. <coughs> So I'm asking the court, and I know the court knows this, that an accused is presumed innocent until proven guilty. But I brought that angle for you to see that even the police know he is a former leader of such an organization. Therefore, the charges, the police will provide the best evidence that the charges before the court cannot stand. So, but more on the basis that his co-accused have been released, that he brought himself, he presented himself to court last week, presented himself voluntarily to this year in Nairobi, and today has presented himself to court voluntarily. This is a man who the court can even release on a free bond. He is a leader who in the recent elections vied for senator of Nyandarwa County, not Nyandarwa, like Kipia County. And Gang has over 40,000 votes. So I can say he's a leader of refuge. He's not a person who can fail to come to court. He's not a flight risk. So if the court is persuaded, you can admit him to free bond. And if not, granting same terms as the others. Allow me, without drama, to say the following. Yes, yes. That will be. Yes, if you see your. Uh... Oh, sorry. I forgot it. I used to be <laughs> serious. Yes, I understand. And I'm forgetting that <laughs> it's still money. <laughs> we haven't gone to digital. Please uh, remember that. Yes, I, will, I will be looking at the time. <laughs> I'm saying that uh, yes, I'm with it right now. Oh, yes. Where you are. Sorry. <coughs> yes, allow me to say the following. Yeah, that our client's view is that these charges are politically motivated. For the sole intention of curtailing his political and civil rights, especially the right to self expression, association, and assembly. And also intended to stop him from <coughs> mobilizing his political base like every other politician does. And one pointer to that is that advert I have drawn the court's attention to. And I have shown the prosecutor and it's on the DCI timeline where he is referred to as ex Mugiki leader. Yet they prefer charges, calling 
still is a member of a non-profit association. I also wish to draw your attention, Naona. When he presented himself to the DCI last Friday, <coughs> last Thursday, which was the 25th of May, and I was present. He was <coughs> through treats separated from us, his lawyers, and spirited away. And they took the intervention of the DPP to have him set free to present himself before your court today. <coughs> Looking at the time, this was happening after 1 p.m. They intended to have him over the weekend. Not because it was necessary, but as a punishment before even the trial commences. And we are grateful to the DPP that he put an end to that and he came to court, he came to court as a free person. I'm only bringing in that so that the court appreciates the mischief that is being played. Finally, I want to say that there has been certain statements in the press which I'm going to ask my learned senior, they want to be able to more particularly describe which prejudice the trial brought there against our client and we will be urging the court to make appropriate directions. <laughs> Yes, you know. Uh, yes, you know, proceeding from where senior counsel has end of. It is true, the bail terms being sought, they are being, they have, or they can be induced or influenced by external forces, despite the fact and the knowledge of the independence of the court, that our client has been vilified and vilified and crucified in the media, by the individuals who want to see this trial or this incident take place this day. I will not shy off your honor to suggest under Article 27 that we are all equal before the law and that yesterday in a function somewhere in Dika, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya made the fine comments that are meant to lower the opinion of the right-thinking member of the society so far as the innocence of our client is an issue. Again, I reiterate, I am aware that the court is independent under Article 159, but those statements, knowing the experience in this country, has had previously in the same group to which the DCI acknowledges that our class does not belong to, can invite and indeed threats were issue that young men will be subject of extrajudicial killing from a very, very high office. I have no reason to doubt that that can happen, especially if the same is done by the second person in command. So here we are before you, seeking for your mercy, that you grant our client bail as prayed, and that this could thus be jumped. Any person, any organ, any individual, 
and desist and desist from making such comments that are derogatory and prejudicial to our clients. Case. Indeed, Your Honor, under the common law, such an act is punishable by this court that desist of this matter. Oh, sorry, I've not been a senior counsel in the Sorry, please. Where are you? I don't have that face. Sorry, I have a face. Such comments that are directly and judicial to our clients is. The individuals making them must be restrained by this honorable court, which has the jurisdiction to do so, for making such of judicial derogatory statements. And I say, Your Honor, that under common law, such an act will be punishable by this court under the doctrine of subject C. We'll be making relevant applications in the future to the individuals concerned with those statements during the trial. So I believe counsel indicating that uh, there will be influence from external forces. There are allegations I need to be founded. Uh, very well. Uh, 
other than coal, there are some substantive issues that have been raised, which I think we ought to be captured in substantive ruling. You will kindly give me about 30 minutes. We resume at 10 minutes past noon. Sorry, 10 minutes past one. That's the next uh, 30 to 35 minutes for the This is uh, the rule of the court. The name to accuse is gender. Uh, yeah, comfortable sense. Sorry. The name to accuse herein appear before me for plea. He pleaded not guilty to several counts, numbering seven. For clarity, in the substantive charge, on one to seven of the twelve charges appearing in the charge sheet. Similarly, and for clarity of record, the co accused who are not present in court took plea on the 9th of May 2023, and each was released on bond of 100,000 children with an alternative of cash bail of 50,000 children. They paid the cash bail and are expected in court for pretrial directions on the 20th of June, 2023. The reason I bring this is because the Lionel Senior Counsel, Mother Karua, asked this court to either adopt similar terms of bond or in the alternative, grant the ninth accused free bond. The basis of this is equality of the accused in trial process, and secondly, that the accused being a reputable leader with what she terms as substantive support base as a big place of a board. Similarly, she stated that the accused voluntarily appeared before this court on the 24th May 2023, appeared voluntarily before the DCI Nairobi on the 25th May 2023, and as voluntarily and without summons availed themselves in court today. She concluded by stating that the accused is not a flight risk. In a little digression to the application, 
the senior learned council asked the court to note the following. First, that the judges hearing are politically motivated with the sole intention with the sole intention of curtailing the accused from mobilizing his political support base and infringing on the accused political and civil right of self expression, association, and assembly. She complained further that when the accused appeared before the DCI on 25th May 2023, he was through tricks, whisked away from his lawyers, and it only took the intervention of the DPP for, his, for him to be reunited with his lawyers. This to her is a demonstration of mischief by the DCI. Mr. Njiru had this to say. Article, 1, Article 27 of the Constitution provides for equality before the law. He laid this basis on the alleged statement by the Deputy President, which in his view jeopardizes the trial of this case. He alleged that threats were issued to young men, and specified though, that they may face extrajudicial killings. He asked that this court should injunct all bodies and organs from making statements and inferences that may jeopardize the trial hearing or statements that are subjudice. He associated himself with the submissions by the senior near council, that the accused should be released on free bond. The learned lead prosecutor, Council Minor, steered away from direct response to the issues raised by the council for their case. She went legal. She asked that the court should make independent view and not driven by mercy, as alluded to by Council Njiru. She submitted that the court in granting bail should be guided by the existing born and bail policy and the relevant laws. She submitted in objection to the accused admission to pre born She asked that the court should consider the bond of bail that is consumable to the offense. She either took she had either or no objection to the accused admission to bond. This is the determination. The law on accused admission to bond is clearly spelled out in Article 49 <coughs> of the Constitution. I deem it fit to respect. Quote, an accused person has a right to be released on bond or bail on reasonable condition pending a charge of trial, unless there are compelling reasons not to be released. The constitutional rights to bail as guaranteed under the Constitution is therefore subject, sorry, yes, the constitutional right to bail as guaranteed under the Constitution, is therefore subject to being granted on reasonable condition pending trial, or unless compelling reasons not to do so, and does not mean that the right is absolute. In the end, the discretion to grant bail and determine the conditions rest with the court. In exercising this discretion, the court must seek to strike a balance between protecting the liberty of the accused person and safeguarding proper administration of justice. This was well explained by Mativo J, as he then was, in Republic of Stanford, Kabake Mwangi, 2016 EKLR, as follows, quote, Granting bail entails the striking of a balance of proportionality considering the rights 
to the applicant who is presumed innocent at this point on one hand and the public interest on the other hand. The cornerstone of the justice system is that no one will be punished without benefit of due process. Incarceration before trial, when the outcome of the case is yet to be determined, cuts against this principle. The need for bail is to ensure that the accused person will appear for trial and not corrupt the legal process by absconding. Anything more is excessive and positive, end of quote. The conditions for grant of bail, sorry, the conditions for grant or refusal of bond and factors for consideration have been broadly identified as follows. These are the courts, these are what the courts must consider. One, the nature of the charge. Two, the strength of the evidence which support the charge. Three, the gravity of the punishment in the event of conviction. Four, the previous criminal record of the accused, if any, by probability that the accused would not surrender himself for trial. Six, the likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that could incriminate him. Seven, the likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that could incriminate him. Eight, the likelihood of further charges being brought to the, against the accused. Nine, the probability of guilt. Ten, detention for protection of the accused. Ele and eleven, the necessity to procure medical or social reports pending the final disposal of the case. In the case hearing, the prosecution are not opposed to the accused admission to form. The requirement, there are two questions, is that it be compatible with the offense the accused is facing. My point of interrogation, owing to the accused status in the society, would be ground six and seven <coughs> as outlined above, and for clarity are as follows. The likelihood of the accused <coughs> interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that would incriminate him, and the likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that would incriminate him. I, however, want to state that the accused has been out on anticipatory bail granted by Nairobi High Court Miscellaneous E 165 of 2023. Hence, in my view, cannot be applied first. I, however, would wish to observe that considered during the circumstance of this case, conditions ought to be placed on the accused admission to form. And I give the following condition. One, that the ninth accused is submitted to a bond of 100,000 shillings or an alternative cash bail of 50,000 as the other four accused. Two, the accused is restrained from making statements either through press or in public writings which make any direct reference to this case. Three, that the accused shall in dependency of this case 
never make any contact with any prosecution witnesses known to him in a manner that is likely to jeopardize the trial of this case. Finally, that any violation of the above condition shall lead to cancellation of the bond terms. Those are the orders of this court.